Hello, Hello there. Frederick. Hello. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you again. Yes, uh, how are you doing? Ladies and gentlemen, the director of the film, Frederick Gerten. Yeah, uh, again, thank you for being with us. Uh, I propose we just start. Uh, so my first question, what you very effectively, in my opinion, show in this film, is that apart from like the usual factors like gentrification and Airbnb, which we talk about when thinking how uh, our cities are becoming unlivable, there is also this somewhat hidden story we should be paying attention to. So did you know from the very start that you, uh, Push will be dealing with this global pattern of capital that's using housing as financial assets? Or is this something that you discovered only later on already making the film? It's like yes and no. Uh, I had some little sense of it, but it's also been a scary ride for me, you know, understanding more and more how how strong this movement is and how much money is at stake. I didn't know that. So it's, and also understanding that everything changed after the 2008 financial crisis, because it's like, it's a new breed of actors coming into the housing market. Blackstone, as we talk about in this film, they entered 2011, it's only eight years ago and they are not the biggest in many countries. So it's a very short time period. And all these guys are in it for a short time. They're not long time investors in housing. They don't really care about housing. They're only looking for quick profits. Uh, can we talk a bit about Leilani? How did you meet her? What made her the guide? Uh, because through her eyes, we see this crisis play out on a global level. Yeah, I, I didn't know her in the beginning when I was uh, researching the film. But of course, I, I know from my other films, for example, Bikes vs. Cars, uh, which is about lobby-driven city planning. Uh, I know that it's good to have... The, the global perspective is interesting. If you zoom out of the national states, uh, you, can, you can understand patterns in a different way. And... And then you need global actors. And it's, there are not so many of them. So Le, when I found Leilani, and I also found out that she is a great person, uh, she was an obvious choice. But I mean, honestly, I, I've started to follow her on Twitter. I found one day a very interesting story where she said something that really intrigued me. I contacted her. We had a Skype. <laughs> and... Uh, we decided to meet in London uh, and I shot a few days with her and we found out that we actually could work together. So it started like that uh, two years ago. And, th and then it, we kind of quick, we understood that we had mutual interest in the way that she was, she's quite lonely in her job. You know, she is not paid by the UN. She's an independent expert and she has a very small team. So we actually, could help each other. I could ask her question, but she could, she could also ask me. So we could kind of send ideas to each other and also challenge each other to understand more because I am not an academic. I'm not an expert. I'm a filmmaker. You know, it's, uh, so it's, it's very much what you see in the film is also my learning experience in many ways. Mm -hmm. Uh, but also, I think she, because you said you're a filmmaker, which <laughs> you obviously are. I think Liliana is uh, very important also in terms of the structure of the film. Because yeah. she, she almost performs like a hero. And one critic put it, uh, because of her, the film reads almost as a, as a thriller. So how, how important uh, for you was this structure to make it very dynamic and approachable and also understandable? I, I like to make films that I that me myself can understand, you know. I, I don't want to make films for critics, I want to make films for audience. And I want them to be approachable, honestly. Uh, so, so, of course, the, the structure, it helps a lot to have somebody in the middle of the film who actually is on the move. Who's, I mean, so for me, she is my private detective, you know. She is out there investigating a story, and it's a crime story. 
and and it helps a lot, of course. Also, I mean, also that she is she's honest, and she's also emotionally honest in a in a very cool way, which is not so easy to find with people who work with NGOs and so on. They all look too good, <laughs> kind of. But she has this kind of nice balance in her character, which, which makes it easier. And what about the other main protagonists, so so to speak, uh, Stiglitz and Saviano and Sassen? Uh, how and why did you choose them? Well, <clears throat> there's obviously something really complicated to understand out there. And and uh, Sassen was the first one I found, uh, and she is extremely interesting. And uh, I mean, I, I like when people tell me things in a way that makes my, like, like, kind of clears my mind. It's very easy sentences. Saskia says, a bank is one thing, but the, fi the finance is something else. Wow, you know, we've always talked about the bank, but now she, she makes it clearer. The financing sector is like a mining company. You know, they're digging out, leaving the trash behind. For me, those, and I mean, we have Stieglitz, he's a Nobel laureate. He says, you can make a hell of a lot of money by destroying the planet. Is something wrong with that? <laughs> you know, a kid could say the same. Uh, Greta says it also, you know. Uh, but I, I like to have these experts coming in and helping us to understand, but also sometimes say things that are really, really clear cut. Saviano is important to me because the criminal money is a part of the game. And the, and the tax havens are the meeting place where the, where the criminal money and the legal money meets, or the semi-legal money, or the tax evasive money. So this kind of, I think it's for me, the Saviano part is kind of central for the film. Uh, because it, of some reason, we talk, we talk a lot about the Panama Papers, we talk about the Paradise Papers, but when we talk about them, we talk about them as rich people hiding money. But here we get to know that this money is not actually hidden, it goes straight into our cities. No money is sitting ever on a paradise island. That's just the computer construction, you know? The money goes into our cities and they destroy our cities because they are in their interest to pay more than the value of a house. And I'm sure you have the same problem in Slovenia. <laughs> So, yeah. But you also counter this for, let's say, uh, figures of knowledge and authority with these um, small stories of, of resistance, images of community. I'm thinking here of like the pastry chef in, in Kreuzberg or, or that fantastic barman in the communist daughter, the pub. So how important for you was to include also these kind of moments in the film? It's very important. Uh, you know, I, I have two amazing female cinematographers in the film, uh, Janice from Brazil and, and Iris from Toronto. And <clears throat> we've talked a lot about the, the image language. And um, for me, it's, you know, you have to, to kind of create some kind of counter images to, to these cold actors. And for me, it was community. It is community. That's what we love with cities. And that's what we should defend in our cities. Um, so, so, so that image and these people are important in the film. Even the dogs in the end of the film, if you saw them, are important because they are like they are part of the cities we love. Mm -hmm. uh, this kind of crazy, not constructed, perfect uh, societies. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's give the floor to the audience. Any questions for Frederick? We also have mics on the balcony. Anybody? Ah, we have one there. Can you see the public, Frederick? I see them all, they're beautiful. Great, perfect. <laughs> Hi. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. So can. It, it seems that Leilani really wants to believe that her tactics work. And I'm wondering, what about you? Do, do you believe that her tactics work? Is like this the right strategy? After everything you saw, 
during the movie? Um, I mean, she has a very special role in the UN, and um, and I think there and there are like fifty special rapporteurs in on the plan are uh, working in this system. She's the most successful of all these fifty, and I mean, I th I think she's very successful. She's successful because she is she is very straight on her bottom line, and that's the language of housing is a human right. This is a legal thing. She's a lawyer, and and this being a lawyer, meeting politicians, meeting lawmakers, it's actually something. She moves things. So now Canada, you see in the end, there is a little joke with the Canadian minister. They actually, they actually took her legislation, Canada. Portugal has now a new human rights based housing policy. Also from Leilani's uh, proposals, many other countries are listening to this and getting inspired by it. So I, I think she, she actually, she is very successful. If she's successful in relation, relation to Blackstone, I don't know. I mean, it's not up to her to, to take down Blackstone. We need to be a bit f few more, I think. Anybody else? No, not. Ah. Uh, what convinced you or how did you decide to uh, take this subject to start making a movie about it? Um, that's, it's a good question, and I don't really have a, a good answer. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I've always been interested in cities. Um, I travel a lot with my films. I meet a lot of people. I, I constantly go around and, and try to understand what I see and what is happening. Uh, and then suddenly there is a moment where I can say, okay, maybe I can do this film now. Maybe this is the way to take it. I don't know if you've seen any of my previous films, but I, there is a film called Big Boys Gone Bananas, uh, where I'm, it's about me getting sued by a big banana company, but it's basically on how the big corporations use the PR industry to shift the focus away from, from what they don't want to talk about. And then Bikes versus Cars is, is about how the lobby kind of took over and destroyed our cities. So this is like, for me, it's almost like a third sister of films um, that is, is looking into this kind of big anonymous powers that are, are um, ruling our societies. They're, they're really strong superpowers, but they're, none of them or they don't really act openly. And I think that's, uh, that's really, it's interests me. I don't know if that's a good answer. It's a, it's a try. <laughs> uh, anybody else? Hej, jag vill bara prata några ord på svenska och säga att det finns svenskar i publiken också. Tack för en fin film. Okay, English. Uh, I'm from Sweden, I just told him. Uh, in Sweden, in the 1980s, uh, the investment companies started buying up um, municipality-owned public housing. For example, in Malmö, Rosengård, where Slatan Ibrahimovic grew up, it was born in, uh, bought in the 1980s by such companies. And they just destroyed everything, if you put it bluntly. Uh, since then, basically nothing has happened. There is a group that has a lot of power that has been very passive during this development, and that is politicians. Why haven't they done anything? Or can they not do anything? Are they completely in control of the money? Uh, politicians can and, and must do more what they do now. I think, I mean, you, you, you see this little ending of the film where we meet uh, Milton Friedman, the, the high priest of economy. So, I mean, Milton Friedman's take away all the regulations, policies, 
has been the ruling theme of global politics for a long time, for 40 years. The whole of EU, I mean, I love a lot of things with the EU, but the EU is an extremely neoliberal project also. And so I think what we see now, what you describe and what we see now is a product of 40 years of, of politics taking a step back and leaving everything to the market because the market promised to solve all the problems. And, but what Stiglitz said, it didn't work. The market don't solve all the problems. And, and, and now the politicians are in deep shit because they, they, it's very hard for them to get back on track. Because these guys, uh, the market is now so much more, they're so much richer than before. And, this, and the states are weaker. <coughs> so it's, it's late in history. But of course, it's never too late. I, I, I totally believe that, I mean, the, the neoliberals will still say, we need less politics, more market, and I think our answer has to be we need more politics and and, and less market solutions. So I, I think I, I don't want to blame only the politicians. It's it, I mean it of course they they are responsible, but maybe also we ourselves are responsible because it's and and the journalist everybody has bought into these market solutions for a long time, so I, I think it's time to to wake up for all of us. Shagdo, anybody else? Uh, following up on that question about Liliana's tactics. She has the shift, this worldwide movement to, to recognize housing as a human right. But on the other hand, there's Sassen uh, saying in the film that uh, uh, this system, the game, the financial industries are playing will collapse. It's not sustainable. It will implode. And further still, you already have mayors of like Barcelona and Berlin taking concrete action. So what will happen now, in your opinion? What's the prognosis? I'm not an expert, I'm just a filmmaker. <laughs> That's my perfect line here. I don't know. It's, I mean, obviously Leilani's movement, the shift, is growing. More and more cities are joining. But it's still a very, it's, the, it's a very weak and new movement. There's not really any office. You know, it's more people gathering around some principles. And, and it's also like a... a um, a community that shares experiences, because I think that's interesting now. You mentioned Berlin and Barcelona. I can now mention Denmark, which now have a new government, and it's really, they, they also want to try to get Blackstones out. Uh, I mean, we have, Singapore has a tax on empty apartments. New Zealand uh, is blocking foreigners to buy in houses in the country suddenly. Uh, Portugal has this new legislation I mentioned, Canada, I mean also in California there is a new legislation coming up, rent control, so there is resistance also coming up and I think there is no perfect politics anywhere, so it's very much about people are now learning from each other and then the other part of your section, your question is will, will capitalism implode, <laughs> die by itself. I don't know. It's very hard to know. Everybody's talking about the bubble all the time. I'm not really, I'm, <clears throat> I'm a little bit afraid of all this bubble talk. It's, it's like we're talking about the weather, you know, it's like it's, uh, will it be hot this summer or not? Or Of course, it, it, this system will not work smoothly forever it it will be it will be bumpy and shaky um, but the, the thing we can learn from this crisis the 2008 crisis is when we really thought that capitalism had fucked up is that it became even worse so they they are extremely good at taking advantages also of the crisis that they self create i i i think that Blackstones and others, they're really, their biggest challenge right now is to find new places where they can park their money. It's like it's, it's a desperate look. 
That's why they're into water. They're into, I mean, Blackstone is also involved in agribusiness in Brazil. <coughs> the burning forest, they're also part of that. So wherever there is money to make, they have to be there because that's where the growth is, you know. So, but on the other hand, um, I, I, I think we need to believe that it's possible to, to stop them. And we do that, what we do now, what you do now. We gather, we talk, uh, we try to, to move our own societies, move our own politicians. I mean, the best way to move politicians is actually to, to move your, your friends and your circles and, and make them bigger. So I, I, in that way, and I, I, and I think that's possible because I think a lot of politicians also now see that this is not working. So it's, the, the system is now so fucked. <laughs> so even politicians who have been lazy now feel, shit, we have to do something because it's, it's not working anymore. Uh, Shani. Okay, then I would end with this. Uh, I told you before the screening, we have a very interesting mix of people here in the audience. The representative of the uh, public housing fund from the municipality. Uh, there are members of the cooperative uh, Zadrugator. Do you have any final words of maybe encouragement or like some kind of an action plan, ideas on what can and should be done on this very local level? I think it's, I mean, the cool thing is that resistance can have many names. And, and um, I, I was recently in El Salvador showing the film. <laughs> and then I was out meeting a lot of cooperatives, uh, for example. And, and But I also met the housing minister of the country. And, and of course, I, so there is, the, the resistance has to exist in many levels. So I, I just encourage you to keep going. But the cooperatives is not the only solution, the sole solution for this story. Uh, so, the, so you have to fight in many different levels. But I would say now, I mean, as you're now releasing the film in Slovenia and other of your neighboring countries, I, so support this film. Tweet about it. Um, tell your friends about it. and um, Use your social media. The film is also out playing in many other countries. Like there's some Swedes in the room. So it's still up in cinemas in Sweden. Uh, it's going to open up in Greece soon. It's out in, in Spain right now. So it's, it's happening. And I'm, I'm on my way to, to Mexico in next week and then to New York. So it's, uh, it's moving. Great. It's good. Uh, thank can you. I, yeah, I have one little wish. Can you, yeah, can yeah, you say, I want to take a picture when you all are waving happy to the camera. <laughs> Is that okay? The camera is right over here, by the way. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So everybody has to be really, really happy. <laughs> <laughs> is this for the producers for your next project? <laughs> I don't know. We have to think about it. But it's, uh, it's, it's nice to meet you all. And, uh, and uh, Peter, I couldn't be there. Uh, but it's, yeah. yeah. Be good. It's and, a shame. And keep but thank you for taking the time to talk to us. Uh, all the best with your future projects. And I hope to see you uh, someday in Ljubljana. I would love to come. Take care. Bye-bye. Ciao. See you. Bye.